This video is going to be a complete walkthrough of the Bushnell Ion Elite GPS golf watch, which retails here in the UK for around £200. Now, if you've got any questions about this golf watch while you're watching this video, then make sure you leave them down in the comments below. And in the description, you'll find any links that I've got to any discounts to buy this watch for less than retail price. Just a point to note, you can see here that the screen is flashing and that's nothing to do with the watch. This watch actually has a really nice clear display. It's just that it's the shutter speed of this camera isn't syncing with the display refresh rate of the screen. And that's why you get this blinking. But trust me, in real life, you don't get this flashing. So to begin with, you can see here, we've just got the main watch screen that you have when you first turn on a watch. And so to start around a golf, what you do is slide across and press that golf button there. You get the little Bushnell logo, and it's asking me if I want to continue the last game, which I don't want to do in this case. So now we've just got to wait around while it searches for the GPS signal. As you can see here, then it gives you a list of the local courses. So we're at Ryersbridge Golf Club right now. So we select that one. And then it's come up with this screen here because I'm not actually stood anywhere near the first tee. So you can see that obviously it starts on the first hole. Now to change the hole that we're on, what we're gonna do is just scroll across, press that button, scroll down there with the scrolling touch screen. And there we go. So the closest hole that I am to at the moment is the par three seventh. So you can see at the beginning, you've got here your distances to the back of the green, to the middle of the green, and then to the front of the green as well. You can see here that you've got this home layout, which has got pretty much everything you need from this home screen. So to begin with, if you wanna see the whole layout, then you press this button here in the top left, and you can see that you've got an overall layout of that hole. If you want to, you can zoom in more specifically and then start scrolling around there. So if you wanna get a little bit more of a look of the shape of the green or the hazards. Now notice that there are three hazards on this hole. We're gonna come back to that in a moment, but to zoom out, there we go, you zoom out there, and to get back, you just press the single button that you've got on the side of the watch. That takes you back to the home screen. Now, if you want a little bit more of a detailed look at the green, you press the green button up the top there, and now you can see the shape of the green, and it's telling you where it's calculating the front and the back of the green from. So you can see here that that's the angle that I'm looking across from the green, and as you just saw there with a the touch screen, you can move the green about if you wish as well press the button on the side to get back. Now I mentioned a moment ago about the hazards and that's because if you press this left hand button here, it'll give you a display of all the hazards on the hole. But you can see that it's showing no hazard data for this hole, but you could clearly see there's three bunkers protecting this green. I found that happens a few times actually on different courses where I've tested this watch. So you just have to be a little bit careful. Once you've finished the hole, you can enter your score by pressing this button down here on the right. So you can see then that depending upon what settings you have, you can enter the number of shots that you took. So let's say I took four shots and the number of putts that you took, and then you press save. Now, because that's a par three, it hasn't given me any more options. You can see on the bottom right here, now it's keeping a live track of my score. So I'm now one over. But if we put actually the et score for the next hole, so you can see it's moved me onto the eighth, which is a par five. Then what you've got here is if I enter, say I took a six and I took another two putts, it's actually giving me a separate screen where it's asking me to confirm whether I hit my tee shot left, middle, or right. Now, because I've got a slice, we're gonna say I hit it right. And there we go, it's moved me on to the next hole. Now, if you do wanna change your holes that you're on, all you do is press this bottom button here, so you can see we're on the ninth hole and it's telling me it's a par four. If you press this bottom button, then you can scroll back up and you can get back to the hole that you wanna be on. So I've gone back to that par. Just to show you what the hazard view actually looks like on a hole that does display hazards, if we move it onto the next hole, which is the par five, press the hazard button, and here we go. You get a list of the hazards. So you don't get a map overview or anything like that. What you get are these descriptions on the right and then distances on the left. If you scroll down, you can see here that you get short descriptions as well. So this is saying water and it's 486 yards away. Now it's not telling you the distances to carry, it's telling you the distances to get to the hazard. What you've got here on the right is how far you have to hit it to leave a 150 yard layup, 125 yard layup, and a 100 yard layup. A few other things just to note on the screen here, you can see there you've got the Bluetooth icon at top letting you know whether that's turned on or off. You've got a little orange button letting you know that you've got any notifications from your phone. Now to get to your notifications, you swipe from the top. And you can see here that I've got a text message from my wife Susie, although can't actually read what the text message is. All the notification does 
is tell you that you've got a text message on your phone. And that's pretty much all of the golf settings that you have on the watch and everything that you need to know. Swipe into the left from this home screen gives you your clock display, as you can see there in your dates. If you want to quickly know what the time is, that's nice and clear. And then if you swipe across again, then you get a menu setting. Now from the main screen, also if you want, you can swipe right and it takes you to the other side of that menu. You can see here that you've got the distance tracker. So if you press that button on the top, then you make sure that you press that once you've hit your shot, start walking towards your ball, the distance will track up and it will let you know how much you hit your last shot. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't happen automatically. You have to always remember to manually do that. You can see here as well is that you've got a different scorecard. So on the right hand side here, you've got your current score in terms of your stroke play, the number of shots that you've taken, and it gives you a little bit of an indicator on how you're doing. So your greens in regulation, your number of putts so far, and your percentage of fairways hit. And you scroll through, you can actually get some specific information and change the details of your scorecard as you go through. You can also see from this screen, you've got a settings button. So this is where you can control all of the settings for the watch. So to begin with, if we look at golf settings, you can see here that you can turn tournament mode on and off. So if you turn tournament mode on, then that just turns off some of the features which aren't allowed if you're entering a tournament, such as slope mode. Then you can see that you've got slope mode as well. So you can turn slope on and off. So if we turn slope on and go back to the main golf setting, you can see now that we've got this orange flashing ring at the moment, and that's because it can't pick up the slope mode. When it does then pick up the slope mode, that ring will turn to a solid blue uh, display. You can see here then, if we go to golf settings, then you've also got whole view mode. So you can choose whether to have shot planning on or off. You can choose to have your tee shot rings on and off, showing the yardages out from the tee shot. You can also have your pin rings showing the yardages out from the green as well if you want to. Going back, you've then got score mode. So from here, you can choose whether you want advanced, basic or off. So basic just means you're keeping your score. Advanced means it's tracking your putts and your tee shots as well. Or you can choose to have it off so you're not tracking your score at all. And if you scroll down now, you can then got score format. So you can choose to set it on stroke play, Stableford, or modified Stableford where you're actually using your handicap as well. Interestingly, it doesn't give you this option at the start when you begin your round. You have to remember to go back and actually then change the score setting in the menu once you've started your round. A little bit odd. You can also change your unit settings. You can see here that you can change it from yards to meters. And then you've also got auto advanced hull. So you can choose to turn that on or off. So once you've got to the green and then move away from it, it will automatically jump you on to the next hull. Looking at the actual set system settings themselves, you can see here you can change your display. So with the display, you can choose the brightness. Now I've got to admit, I leave it on full blown brightness just because I like to have it as nice and clear as possible. And I've got to reiterate, this is a really nice, clear, bright screen that you get with this. And you can update your screen timeout as well. So choose how long it takes for your screen to turn off when you haven't used it for a little while. You can choose on your notifications to show you pop-ups, call sounds and text messages. Now with the notifications, you're only getting your phone notifications, so your phone calls and your main SMS text messages. You're not getting notifications on your apps, you're not getting notifications on your WhatsApp. You can choose your language mode if you want, but I'm going to keep it as English for now because I didn't do very well at GCSE French. And then if we go on the about as well, you've just got the general information about the watch, which no one really needs to know about. You've also got a factory reset button there at the bottom. With the Bluetooth, you can choose to turn it on or off, and that's your refresh button for pairing to your phone, but we've already done that, so I don't need to worry about that so much. And then you can choose to set up to four alarm, oh no, it's more actually, sorry, maybe five alarms that is, if you want to set an alarm on your watch. However, most people these days, are just gonna set it on your phone. Lastly, you've got time settings down the bottom here, so you can choose your time format, set the time, and set the date. That's all pretty simple. And there you go, that is literally it. Now, if you wanna see my full review of this golf watch to let you know what I actually think of it, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification so it will let you know when I post my full review for this watch, which will be coming very soon. And as I mentioned at the beginning, if you are thinking about buying this watch, then make sure you check out the links down in the description below because I've included any exclusive discounts that I've currently got for this watch.